Uh, I just have a, a few slides. I would just like to talk for a second, uh, and I'll keep this very short. Um, it, but it, if, perchance, you have not been able to attend some of the other sessions, I think really this is a, an ARC perspective, which is much better articulated uh, by the people who have spoken already from the end user uh, community, such as ExxonMobil, such as Kraft, such as General Motors. But um, nevertheless, uh, this is kind of the perspective that we see from our position as industry analysts, where we are uh, working with both end users and suppliers. And it, it, the story is very similar, that there's a, there's a traditional way of handling the automation segment within capital projects. And it ends up being very um, sequential. It ends up being um, very end-loaded. So that the sequential nature of these kind of engineering activities and information management activities as the, as the plant or the capital project proceeds from front end design through detail design and procurement and system staging and so on and so forth. It's very, very sequential kind of operation traditionally. And what happens is that because the automation activities and engineering activities are at the back end of the work, they end up on the, uh, under a lot, happening under a lot of pressure, they end up happening um, in, uh, in kind of a, a change mode, and that can occur throughout uh, the uh, factory acceptance into the site acceptance and into commissioning. The other, the other thing that, that drives is that the um, integration of a target system with the application software and require, the earlier that's required, the more it requires that the project teams for both safety and for automation and, and other activities be co-located, which can be very painful. Um, so the, the net result, and, and uh, Sandy Vassar expressed this very, as a goal, is we never want to see automation on the critical path for a capital project. Well, that, I, I, that's certainly an, an admirable goal, and I'd be delighted to see people achieve it, but they'll, they'll probably find a way to keep it on. Um, what we see are really, a, a, and this is again an opinion here, four kind of emerging technologies that will uh, have some impact here. And some of these driven uh, by suppliers and, and end users alike. First of all is the, the smart configurable I.O., which turns a customized engineering I.O. solution for uh, uh, sensor I.O. In, in the automation project into a really commoditized, uh, standardized, really commoditized is not the right word, but is standardized installation so that when changes occur, they do not impact that installation, and as additions occur, they just they procure a little bit more capacity. So it turns that from a custom engineered solution into a, uh, a more standardized and, and quantifiable deliverable using the intelligence of the I.O. product. The second technology is virtualization, and uh, this is occurring both in terms of the distributed control or basic process control systems and the safety systems. They're able to be put into virtualized environments, um, and suppliers and end users are finding value in that. Um, the third is dynamic simulation, which uh, Rob mentioned as kind of a, a handy uh, tool, very handy and very much becoming part of the deliverables of automation systems. Uh, certainly in the, in the area of operator training simulation, it, that's been the case for a while, but it has not penetrated into other areas or maintained its value over the life cycle. What we see is people maintaining a trend toward people maintaining that kind of model information as an intellectual property asset for the life of the system much more. And some of the newer developments that are still to be released, I think, in the automation space will speak to that. And finally, kind of a cloud computing model for staging systems and staging automation teams so that it kind of breaks the, mo the need for teams to be co-located, for activities to occur in that, uh, in particular locations and, and times. 
So it's giving a lot of degrees of freedom to the engineering activities. And, and as you saw, if you were at uh, the Monday morning or Tuesday morning presentation, a lot of freedom uh, to the engineering teams and development teams. So certainly, uh, uh, smart I.O. or con smart configurable I.O. or one of the brand names or whatever people call it is going to impact both the, the basic process control and the safety system. Um, if, if, the, if whatever suppliers you're using uh, offer just a, a limited array of those kind of products, there will certainly be more of those products in the future. I, I can't imagine that any automation vendor isn't going to be investing in that area and continuing to invest in it, regardless of whether they have it now or not, or what degree they have it. It's an area that has value. The customers have told them it's valuable. They're going to keep investing in it. The virtualization aspect um, enables uh, the, the, the late binding, as ExxonMobil called it, of the, of the target system to the engineering design. It's an incredibly valuable capability, but a challenge for um, for the project. And then the dynamic simulation. Uh, this is a really uh, an, ab an ability to use models, simulation models of increasing complexity. So starting with really basic simulation models, developing grander and more detailed simulation models, and managing the modeling of the process as an, as an asset over time. This has certainly been a vision for uh, people in the simulation business. I would say it really hasn't had much impact to date on the automation space, but it's having more and more impact as things go along. So the benefit that ExxonMobil and others spoke about is really a shortened schedule that keeps, for, and this is for the automation components, that keeps automation out of the the crosshairs of management, if you will, on a very large capital project. So um, I can't really say it better than has been said before, but based on that and given the context that uh, we've seen already in terms of these large greenfield projects, it seems to me as a, as a, as an, uh, I wouldn't say a disinterested party, but an industry analyst, that these trends are irreversible that the technology is going to move into both BPCS and the safety uh, systems, and it's really up to the practitioners, the owner-operators, the EPCs, um, the suppliers, to learn how to use these technologies so that the end users gain the, the value that they are looking for with these new technologies in terms of having better deliverables for their projects and keeping automation out of the, um, uh, the role where it ends up costing the project time and schedule, but on the other hand, still maintaining the kind of um, culture of quality and separation that Rob spoke about. 